like to show you some of the improvements we've made to working with Python in, in ArcGIS Pro. To start with, we, Pro has over 100 packages in its Python environment. And we, we improve this by adding additional ones each release. Now, you can use these in your existing code and know that they'll be available for you wherever you deploy Python. One that I'd like to focus on today is called GDAL. GDAL is an open source library widely used throughout the geospatial community. You've asked us for the ability to use it in your own scripts, and you have, some of you have existing tools that need specific functionality from GDAL. In Pro 2.3, we now include the Python bindings for GDAL by default. Let's see what this looks like. Here we're looking at the historic site of a stone fort in Rhode Island called Queens Fort. This is a location built by the Narragansett tribe and used in the, in the, uh, used in, <laughs> sorry, used in the, in King Philip's War, the most deadly war in the colonial period of the United States. Now, we want to find specific study areas within this region for further analysis. So let's look at what we have available to us. So if we look at the, we just look at the elevation data, we see some general patterns, some basic trends, but really not any specific detail. If we switch over to imagery, unfortunately, this area is very heavily forested. We can't see any specific detail in the map. And even if we look at high-resolution aerial topography taken during winter, there's not really much of historical significance. Slope is better. It clearly tells us some patterns and some details that might be useful to us. But there's another thing we can do further. Well, GDAL includes a suite of specialized surface measurements, and we can use GDAL in conjunction with ArcGIS. Let's see what that looks like. So here we are. We have a Python toolbox. And the Python toolbox is a great way to write Python code and make it available in a tool that you can use in Pro, you can use in Model Builder, and you can use from the command line, and really anywhere that you can run Python. All we need to do is set up this initialization, and then we create a list here of class names, one class name for each tool. In our case, we only have this one tool. And in that tool, we again set up some information about it. And here we have a, a dictionary that's mapping between the nice names we want to see in the UI and the underlying algorithm name that GDAL uses. Next, we have the getParameterInfo function. This is letting you map each of the parameters to the data types that underlie them. In our case, we're going to take an input raster data set. We're going to take a surface type, one of these different algorithms to implement. And then we're going to generate a new raster output. So let's see what this looks like inside of Pro. Here's our tool. And when we open it up, we see those same three parameters that we just saw in the code. OK, so what happens when this tool actually runs? At that point, it will hit the execute method. And after a little bit of setup work here, we'll see that this code is being, this particular raster is being sent on to GDAL. It's being run through the DEM processing routine. And then it's generating a new raster as an output. Let's run it on our analysis area. First, we'll select an input DEM. We'll select the TPI measurement. So this is one of those custom measurements that I mentioned, the topographic position index. And now let's create a new raster as an output. All right, so let's run this on our region and see if it can show us any interesting patterns. So this is running. This is going to send the raster on to GDAL. It's going to compute the particular values in the study area. And hopefully, we'll see some patterns we don't see with any of our other data sources. So we can see some clear urban features here, a road and perhaps a trail going along the edge of the study region. But we also see some clear patterns in the core study area that we didn't get from our other underlying data sources. Now we have the ability to augment our existing ArcGIS tools with GDAL and use these two things in conjunction for solving new and interesting problems. The ability to manage dependencies and use Python environments is important, and we continue to improve the backstage. We've made it much easier to create environments. They no longer require administrative privileges and are written by default into the user's profile. But in some deployments, this wasn't enough. You asked for the ability to deploy environments to custom locations. This is easy to do in Pro 2.3. All we need to do is click on the Manage Environments button, select an existing environment, click on Clone, and now select any location on our disk. So I'm going to select this folder and then click on the Clone button. And now, after this is finished installing all of the packages and I restart Pro, I can use it and extend it with further packages. 
Now, this is great. This means we have the ability to share a single environment across multiple users on one machine, or we could take this and deploy it across many machines using disk imaging. We're also going to be extending the experience of the environments in Pro 2.4 to allow in upgrades across Pro versions. Now, these are just a few of the things that we've done to Python in the, two, in the Pro release, but we're looking forward to sharing with you even more in the coming year.